All right, we're recording. What is it? Get something. Got some kind of liquid on me. I don't. I must. Maybe when I was walking around the house, I think. No, it didn't rain today. I don't know. Somehow, I got some kind of liquid on my shoulder. Mystery liquid. Oh. I just washed my hands, and I think that I went like this and, like, did something after I washed my hands before they were completely dry. Um, so, class today. Um, Russ finally got his paperwork processed to where he's a uh, officially fully certified CDL instructor now. So, um, he doesn't have to have a certified instructor with him doing, like, dual instructor things. Which, uh, is kind of funny because I think almost everyone in the senior class passed their test today. Um, so, we only have, like, two classes going right now because we didn't have a freshman class last week. And the senior class just graduated out. So we only have the sophomore and junior class. And now we finally have an extra instructor and we don't really need him. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so Keith called in today. He's one of the four people in my, in my class, the junior class. Uh, he called out sick. I'm not 100% on whether he's going to be here tomorrow or not. Uh, Cindy said that someone was out sick today and was going to go ahead and take tomorrow off as well and use today, tomorrow, and the weekend to get better before coming back. But she wasn't sure if that was Keith or the instructor Bruce or maybe David or who. Like, she doesn't know who that was. But uh, a couple of people have been out sick. Uh, I think Bruce is the only one that... I don't know. The instructor Bruce has been out since Tuesday sick. But I think he only works part-time anyway, so I don't even know if he was supposed to be here. All I know is Keith was out sick today. I don't know if he's going to be out sick again tomorrow. We, uh, we did some inspections this morning with Cindy. Again, it was frustrating because Cindy has her own way of doing things, and, uh, we, you know, we got to talking again about how if we just had the same instructor from week two onward um, doing all the inspections and everything and we weren't constantly swapping instructors that it probably wouldn't be a big deal that each instructor has their own little way of doing inspections. But because we're switching instructors so often, it's really frustrating because we're constantly being told contradicting information like, oh, don't say that or do say this or say this before that or you know do the sidestep and the the uh, um, do the step and the what is it all oh, catwalk together whereas in our paperwork it says to do step and frame together or step and then frame and then catwalk and um, like they all have their own little order like minor little adjustments to the the pre-trip and the various inspections but they all do it a little bit different they all want the verbiage a little bit different and it's really really annoying to get a new instructor every day that's not going like by the same list so mildly irritated by that today but we've gotten to the point where we're just like shaking our heads about it we just expect it um, I went ahead and I finished section A writing up the a pre-trip with all the verbiage and I went ahead and printed it off I, I made like six copies enough for everyone in my class plus you know two extra in case anybody else wanted one and I decided to give one of the extras to Gary when I came in and uh, asked him if he wouldn't mind looking over it and let me know if there were any major issues with it and he told me to put it on his desk and he never got back to me on that um, a couple of the instructors saw it and they really liked it. Cindy asked if she could have a copy of it and she said it was really nice. She liked it. 
Um, I didn't get a chance to proofread it or really scrutinize it because, like, I just finished it last night and then went to bed. I didn't, like, I was like an hour past my bedtime when I finished it. So, uh, today I made a couple of, uh, my backpack is way over there, or I would bust out the paper and show you. T today, while I was sitting there, I get there like 45 minutes early because I want to beat traffic. Uh, so I had spare time and I just sit there and look through it and, you know, found a couple of typos, a couple of things that were in the wrong order. So I made a couple of corrections on there that I need to make. Uh, to the document and then uh, try to get the other documents finished um, I handed them out to everybody in class well there were only two other people that showed up for class today so the other two people that were there I gave each of them a copy and uh, Cindy asked for a copy so I gave her one and uh, I gave Gary one the intent with giving Gary one was he all of the pre-trips are based on Gary's pre-trip what he did in the videos so I just wanted him to kind of like peruse it real quick and tell me if there were any glaring issues he didn't I guess he didn't have time to do that uh, so he didn't get back to me today maybe he'll say something to me tomorrow or maybe he threw it in the trash I have no idea um, but I'm gonna keep on doing my own thing trying to get a pre-trip together I need to get it learned this weekend because I might test on Thursday. I asked Cindy about that today, and she said don't count on it. She said just because every class, the last two, maybe three classes, have tested on Thursday of their last week, where normally you test Tuesday after your last week. So you go through all four weeks of class, and then once you finish the class, and you graduate, and you get your certificate and everything, then the following Tuesday you show up at DPS to do your test. Um, that's the way it normally works. But because of you know the winter, not winter, but Christmas holiday, they didn't have a class that week. Um, it opened up some test uh, slots. So every and we had you know a short class where we didn't have a freshman class. So we're we have a couple of classes missing, and it's opened up testing slots so everybody's been testing about a week early so I'm expecting that we're going to be testing or given the option to test this upcoming Thursday but uh, we'll see I don't know um, so I'm going to prepare to be ready for this upcoming Thursday I think that I could wing the test right now I could pass it um, they had some people that they weren't very confident could pass the test that passed the test today. Everyone had passed the test today. They weren't sure if there were four or five people testing today. The rumor going around was that somehow we had five test slots, which supposedly the maximum is four. And we had heard back that three people had tested and all of them had passed was the last I heard. And one of them that tested, um, Dakota, is the youngest person in the school. He's 20 years old. He turns 21 in May. So he can't get like an interstate CDL. He can only get an intrastate CDL at this point. And uh, supposedly he's really lackadaisical and cavalier about the whole school. And he doesn't really expect to pass it his first time. And he's not really worried about passing it his first time because he doesn't really plan on using his CDL until May, I don't think. Uh, so it wasn't expected he was going to pass, and I think he was the first person to test today, and he passed. They said that the examiners are fairly lax. The ones, the three that are doing the examinations right now, they're very um, forgiving, I guess would be the word. They're not going to fail you on some like technicality which is really good because like there are so many auto fail things where like you the whole point of the examination is to determine whether or not somebody can safely operate one of these vehicles on the road and to fail somebody over some stupid technicality because they're stressed out about this test um, and they miss one little thing that's an auto fail 
you know like coming to a stop past the the line in the road I think that might be an auto fail you know if you like go two inches past it or something like that because you you know it the light turned yellow while you were coming up on it and you you know came to a stop as fast as you could and you you know went two inches over that line that might be an auto fail I'm not 100 percent but basically, if you break any law, and that would technically be breaking the law, that that's a ticketable offense. That's any I think anything that you do that is ticketable or illegal is an auto fail. But like everybody crosses that line, and if you have a valid reason, like you were, you know, the light turned yellow on you, and you came to a stop as fast and safe as possible, and you went, you know, two inches into that yellow, you know, white line. Like, I would prefer to have an instructor that be like, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, write that down. That's, yeah, you know, you did the best you could. You operated the vehicle safely. You conducted yourself in a safe manner. I'm not going to fire, you know, fire you, um, fail you on some stupid technicality like that. There are examiners that will. There are examiners that it's just like they're out to try to, you know, fail you. That's their goal in life is to try to fail everyone. Uh, but supposedly the three examiners that uh, they have doing the stuff right now, they're all very fair. Um, so that, you know, if you, sh you know, display that you can safely operate these vehicles, they're going to pass you as long as you don't do something stupid. Um, which is pretty nice because I've heard multiple times while I was in school that Oklahoma, especially Oklahoma City, has the like most brutal CDL testing like Oklahoma City DPS where we're gonna be testing at is supposedly the most difficult place to get a CDL they they have the the harshest uh, examination or testing requirements in the United States I don't know I, this is my second go around and I'll tell you that the first time I did it I didn't test with a DOT examiner. I tested with a... Um, I signed up to drive for Swift. I went to a CDL school that was a private party, High Desert Trucking or something like that, or Desert Trucking School, High Desert Trucking School. I forget what it is. In Reno, Nevada, or I think technically it was Sparks, Nevada, which is like the industrial park of Reno. Um, I went... Swift paid for me to go to that school for I think three weeks and then once I finished that school um, I actually did my CDL test the uh, pre-trip skills and driving test with a Swift certified examiner so it wasn't um, a normal DOT examiner it was a uh, a Swift employee. I think the the rule or the regulation or the law is that the same entity that trains you cannot be the same entity that uh, certifies you or is examines you or whatever they call it. So if Swift trained me, then High Desert Trucking, if they had a certified examiner they could have done the the examination so high desert trained me and swift did the examination uh, this time it's gonna be an actual DOT examiner but here's the thing I thought the DOT examiners were regular like DOT inspectors and DOT officers apparently they're not they're just like tag agents you have to I think Cindy said today that the examiners they're not required to have a CDL so they may not be able to legally operate one of these vehicles. They have to have three years of tag agency experience. So basically, these examiners are people who were tag agents, you know, setting in their processing license plates and tag renewals and printing out uh, driver's licenses and, and stuff like that. And then they go and take a test and they become... DOT examiners and they just uh, they test people all day to get their CDLs so it's not like regular DOT officers that 
they do go and do examinations one day a week and they do something else the rest of the time these are supposedly these are just full-time examiners that's what they do uh, that's kinda weird I don't know but uh what else what else I don't even know if I was making a point there just rambling but uh, the, I think the whole point was that the three examiners that are doing the testing right now, even though Oklahoma City is the hardest place in the United States, according to the people at the CDL school that I've talked with, including one of the people in my class. One of the people in my class travels around the country doing marketing and promotion and stuff like that, and he specifically chose to get his CDL in Oklahoma City because it is the hardest place to get a CDL, and he wanted, like, I don't know, he wanted to do it in the hardest place or maybe it's because that was where his residence was at and everybody told him it was the hardest but I think he was one of the people that I heard it from where he said that this is the heart he's heard it's the hardest place to get a CDL and uh, a couple of the instructors have said that Oklahoma City is the hardest place to get a CDL like the the testing I remember when I did my driving test in Reno Nevada they took me into an industrial park and then they took me on a short section of interstate. Everywhere they took me was designed for trucks. It had big, wide lanes, um, big on-ramps, big off-ramps. Uh, it was very mild traffic. It was in Sparks, Nevada. It was in an industrial park, basically. So it was tons of room. And I, only, I did it in a cab over with a 28-foot trailer. So it was tiny in comparison to a, a regular size tractor trailer. This time, CDL University were driving a normal size Freightliner. All of their their trucks uh, that we do, you know, training in and testing are Freightliners. They have full size sleepers, not like I don't think they're the the ex, you know extended sleepers. I think they're just like the normal sleeper sizes. Uh, but they are they look like the same kind of trucks that over the road drivers drive uh, they're freight liners with normal size sleepers they're not 53 foot trailers they're 48 foot trailers but they're very 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 close to the exact same equipment you would drive out over the road so it's not like they're using the absolute minimum stuff to make it as easy as possible to take the test. And I don't know if that is a uh, like a state or federal requirement that you have to test in you know that size vehicle now. Maybe they they made it to where you can't test in 28 footers anymore. Um, I don't know if that is like a regulated thing or if that's just something the school does. One thing that they did say today, what what Cindy said today, we were asking, I think somebody asked if uh, we would ever go over the route that DPS uh, would take us on um, for the test. And uh, because we, we, we suspected that once we got into our fourth week, we would start like going because the all the instructors know what the DPS routes are. They know where DPS is going to take you to do your road test. They know the route. So we suspected that we would do that route on our fourth week to kind of get some familiarity with it. Cindy said that uh, their, their school is regulated by the state. And... Uh, I don't know if you'd say it's against the law or it's just it's not allowed they are not allowed the school is not allowed to take students on the route the DPS will be testing on they can't do that route um, if they get caught doing that I think the school gets shut down it's really 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 harsh I forgot what Cindy said the penalty is but um, it would be a very harsh penalty so um, they have a bunch of regulations that they have to follow from the state. Um, so it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, Cindy said she's not working tomorrow, 
which shouldn't be a big deal because only the sophomore and junior class were juniors. Uh, they're the only ones that are really going to be doing anything tomorrow. The uh, senior class may have somebody fail the test, or maybe they weren't able to get all five people tested today. So they may have one or two people that are still going to be doing stuff tomorrow. But uh, once you get your CDL, they call you like a junior instructor or something like that, and you'll go out with your other classmates that's you know either failed their test or weren't able to test yet and you basically help that's what I've seen so far um, but they still have to finish out their class time to get credit for the number of hours for the class you have to do 160 hours in the class so uh, but uh, what did we do we uh, So Cindy, right after we finished doing the inspection, Cindy told me she wanted me driving first. And uh, since there were only three of us, I really didn't push the issue about limited drive time. You know, not really wanting to drive for a long time. Uh, so I just didn't say anything and just drove however long she wanted me to drive. But I drove first and I started at like 9 a.m., and we each drove for approximately one hour. Uh, just I just drove around town from 9 to 10. And then uh, somebody else drove from 10 to 11. Then we went to lunch at some uh, Mexican grocery store that had a little restaurant in it. It's kind of weird. Um, but it was really good food. And uh, then... Cindy said that it might rain in the afternoon, so she wanted to go do backing maneuvers, and then she was going to do the third person's driving time after that. So we went out to the uh, mall parking lot and did uh, offsets. Uh, just kept taking turns doing offsets uh, until we had about an hour, until about 2.30. And then from like 2.30 to 3.30, the last person did their drive time, and then we ended up back at the school at 3.30 and did paperwork up until about 3:45, getting our log books up to date, and, and you know, the instructors have to do a daily list of what we did on our. We have these little books that track everything that we did and how well we did it and stuff like that. So the instructors have to fill out a whole bunch of crap in that book every day on us, and then we have to sign it. Um, so that was all the paperwork that we did for about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then we left about 3.45, 3.50, like 10, 15 minutes early. Um, I think I almost got hit on the way home at that 44.40 junction that I've talked about multiple times where it just it comes to a complete stop there because of just poor design and you know bad drivers well it was backed up way further than usual today earlier than usual and I think people weren't expecting that and they weren't really paying attention so I was slowed down to maybe 20 miles an hour and I was approaching a stopped a completely stopped car in front of me that was maybe I don't know 50 75 feet in front of me not very far and I had slowed down to about 20 miles an hour and I was creeping up on this person and a car came up behind me and they didn't realize that traffic was going that slow and so they hit their brakes and then there was apparently a merging car that was merging on at like 60 miles an hour and I think they were looking back for an opening and they started to move over and then they like glanced over and saw that traffic was stopped right there and I just heard squealing tires and like all kind I was just like ah don't hit me <laughs> and nobody hit me so that was nice god I hate <laughs> I hate other drivers so much and it's not like the majority of drivers don't drive that stupid it's just I would guesstimate like less than 25 percent 
of drivers are really, really bad drivers. And it might even be lower than that. It might be 10. It might be even as low as 5%. I don't know. But, man, that those 5% of drivers that are really bad drivers, they stand out like a sore thumb. Like, they, they're just... You encounter them all the time. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was, uh, everybody did really well today. Um, I only did the offset one time. The other two people did it twice. Um, I kind of forfeited this, you know, my position in the second round. Uh, they had, you know, a little bit of issue doing the offset. They were able to get it in. They, the people in the class still don't seem to comprehend, like, I guess it's geometry, on how we're doing these maneuvers. The in, some of the instructors don't even understand it. I mean, they they know how to tell you to do it, but they don't really understand the premise behind it. But what we're doing on these reference points is, you know, like on the offset. The offset is basically you have a lane right here. Let me let me try to figure out a better way to visually explain this. So let's say that my finger is a lane that you're going to put your, your tractor trailer into. Well, they will have you set up, you know, pulled forward a bit, enough room to maneuver. Like, you have, like, at least a full truck length, I think, up to the back of your trailer. But you will you won't be directly in front of that lane that you need to park into or back into. You will be offset from it, either to the right or to the left. I don't know how that's sh showing up on the screen. It goes the opposite direction that I move. <laughs> um, but the very first maneuver we do is get... Let, let me figure out a different way to do this. All right, so imagine that there's this lane we're trying to get into, and we have our tractor trailer right here. Well, the, our very first maneuver is to get get it at an angle. And then we back... And then our second maneuver is to straighten it out. And at the end of that second maneuver, we should be perfectly lined up so that we just straight back into that spot. Well, we have these reference points that tell us how to get at the right angle. And then we back up, and then we have to determine at what point to start our second maneuver. So what we do is we back up to this point right here and we get out of the truck and we go and we line up the side of the trailer with the side of that slot we're trying to get into. And we determine how far off from that, you know, you want the very edge of your trailer lined up with that before you start your next maneuver. And people are not understanding what we're doing with that. Um, basically, it takes a certain number of feet for that other maneuver. Your, your, your tractor trailer, so let's say you're at that angle. It takes a certain number of feet that you're going to be backing to perform that maneuver. Your trailer is going to move over like two feet while you're doing that maneuver of straightening out. So they want you to back up to a certain point so that whenever you finish that maneuver you're gonna be lined up with that lane and people are not understanding that um, Cindy tried to explain that to uh, the other two people in class today and I think they got it maybe I think I think they did kinda get it and then the uh, Yesterday, I was trying to explain it to a couple of people. Um, even the instructor, I don't think, understood it. Like, I, They're really stuck on the premise that you have to stand in front of a cone and walk in a line and do... Like, they have a procedure on how to do it. And I've explained that all you're doing is you're... There's an imaginary line here, and you're just trying to determine at what point that trailer will intersect with that line. 
and you're looking at the angle the trailer is at and if you continue going at that same angle how far back do you have to go until the trailer hits that imaginary line you're counting the number of steps and then once you determine the number of steps you're going up to your door and you're counting them off from your reference point of your door like looking straight out your door you're going back and you know determining that distance there and trying to find something on the ground to let you know that you've reached that point and then once you get to that point you start your second maneuver of straightening the truck out and if done properly you're gonna be lined up perfectly into the spot and you just back up you know straight into the slot or lane or whatever you want to call it but uh... it's uh... there are some really really simple basic concepts that people are having some issues understanding and i think it's just because there are so many things that they're trying to intake and they have so much going on that they're they're pro in their mind they're probably over analyzing and they're like it's just it's coming across as overly complex to them when in actuality it's just really basic simple stuff uh, it's just I think they're just stressed out or something but uh, they're actually doing quite well they're actually doing really well um, so it's the only thing I'm really worried about with the two people that haven't driven these trucks before tractor trailers because Keith and I have driven tractor trailers before if we get into a bad spot like we screw up on one of these maneuvers where we're using reference points to do you know this stuff and we screw up somehow we don't turn the wheel all the way you know doing one of our turns and it messes up our angle or something Keith and I are familiar enough with how to back up a truck and trailer that we can fix it these other two guys whenever they get out of position they don't really know what to do I uh, I explained uh, what I refer to and what the way it was referred to me as a, a C turn and an S turn or an S curve um, these are repositioning maneuvers like a C maneuver or C turn will change your angle and an S can move you left or right so like let's say that you're you know offset on a lane you can use an S maneuver to move you know two or three or four feet over to, so that you're straight into that lane so it's a pull forward maneuver and a C like let's say that you're trying to back up toward this you know lane right here but your angle is off on it where you're like this you're gonna overshoot it you need to change your angle to line up better with that well a C is basically if you want to change your your angle it's just like a C you're just like let's say your angle is like this and you want your angle to be like that let me let me think of <laughs> now, like everything's backwards on the camera uh, I'm trying to think about how to do this now it's gonna look on the camera um, so you're like this and you want to get like this so what you would do is you would do a C maneuver this way and then you would turn back this way so it's just like a C and you want you can go this way too to change your angle so an S is a, the same thing as a C but you're doing an extra maneuver so a C changes your angle and an S repositions you so if you want to move five feet to the right we'll go straight up and down if you want to move over here you can't just slide over here like this so you pull forward in the direction you want to relocate to and then what you do 
is like you do a big wide turn this way to reposition this way and then the remaining turn is to straighten out the vehicle so you start pulling forward like this and you get at this point where you know you're angled this way but you've moved over well at this point your tractor is straight but your trailer uh, it's it's looking backwards sorry your trailer is still like pointed in the other direction so the remainder of the turn of the S is to straighten out your tractor and trailer and get them both straight so you pull over this way and now you moved your tractor over that way and your trailers at you know this angle well I don't even like that looks so it looks backwards on uh, the camera to me I don't know maybe I should invert because it, it just everything's processing backwards but the second half of it is to pull your trailer straight your tractor and trailer straight so I explain those two maneuvers to uh, the other two people in the class and what was really awesome was one of the people in the class Adam the next time he got up there he uh, was right up against the cones on the right side and he did an S maneuver and moved the trailer over about two feet was lined up perfectly straight and backed it in I was like mmm you did it <laughs> I was so proud uh, so it's it's sunk in and uh, and he got it which that and that's something that I brought up today it's something I've been saying in the videos but today I think might be the first day that I've said it at school where I, I, I told like they were talking about how um, other instructors or instructors in general tell them to do stuff and it screws them up well you know whenever whenever they're up there telling them to turn the wheel left and then do this and that and I said yeah and we got on the topic of getting into a position and not knowing how to fix it and I said that's the only thing I'm really worried with you guys about is because yeah if you go in there and you do everything perfect and nothing goes wrong then of course you're gonna do that maneuver on your test day and you're gonna pass it but if anything goes wrong you guys don't really know how to fix it you're just gonna be stuck like anytime you guys have not you know it hasn't worked out for you an instructor has to come up there and give you directions on how to fix it and they should be giving you instruction on how to fix it there's a big difference I said directions is somebody going up to you and telling you turn the wheel all the way to the left pull forward forward stop 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 okay now turn the wheel all the way to the right those are directions instructions are alright you're too far to the right you need to reposition your trailer over to the left so if you do an S maneuver over to the left and reposition two feet you're gonna be lined up straight into that spot and explain the process and explain explain what you're doing why you're doing it and how to do it that is instruction so I started telling them that today and so we got to talking about that and Cindy was our instructor today and that's what she started doing with those other two people was giving them instructions instead of directions and uh, they made huge progress today it was it was pretty awesome so um, and Cindy said that you know that's what she normally tries to do is give students instructions instead of directions that hasn't really been the you know we haven't had Cindy I'm not you know saying Cindy does this because I think this is the first time we've ever done backing maneuvers with Cindy but uh, most of the instructors that I've noticed give directions um, but they're making progress they're doing really well as much as I disagree with some of the things that the instructors do and how they do it whatever they're doing is working these guys are they're picking it up they could probably pass the test as long as they don't screw up too much like when I say that if th you know anything goes wrong they don't know how to fix it twice one of them has on the offset has like gotten at a gotten at a bad angle 
and started going in to the point where they were at a bad angle and they tried to correct it and like you're supposed to be parking in a lane like right here imagine this is a lane well they tried to correct it and by the time the instructor went out there to help them actually while the instructor was trying to help them they ended up getting the tractor and trailer like this like the complete opposite direction <laughs> I don't even know how that happened uh, it was it was crazy uh, so yeah they they need a they need a little bit more help on that I just hope that they don't mess up too bad on uh, on test day but uh yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Went home. 40 minutes? I thought this was only like 15 minutes. Wow. Sorry. Uh, is there anything else? Anything else? Um, nothing I can really think of. Oh, I finally got my uh, my shirts in. This isn't one of them. Uh, I think it was a total of like eight shirts. I order like whenever I order something, I order like a bunch of it. So, uh, like the pants that I wear, it may look like I'm wearing the exact same pants every day, but it's just five pair of the exact same pants. Um, so <laughs> I mean, I I like dress exactly the same every day of the week, but it's different clothes, but it's the same. So, but I got my uh, eight shirts in. I, I think I was a little overzealous, um, or maybe too optimistic when I ordered the first eight shirts. I'm keeping them, by the way. I'm not returning them because I'm hopeful that I'll be able to wear them one day. But I ordered eight shirts that were extra large, and uh, they were not appropriate. They were a little too form-fitting for public viewing, and I forgot that I wear a double X, and uh, so I, I ordered eight more shirts that were double X. This is a double X. It's a, a little loose on me. Um, extra large is I can wear them, but they're not appropriate. They're not like spandex level inappropriate, but they're inappropriate. They're like, oh, that's somebody who's put on a few pounds and hasn't updated their wardrobe. Inappropriate. So, yeah. I got in my new shirts today. I haven't actually tried them on. I ripped the tags of them off and threw them in the uh, washer. And I plan on disrobing and switching to my uh, lounging around the house clothes, my sweatpants and my uh, nasty t-shirts and uh, doing, you know, throwing the stuff I wore in the last few days into the laundry with those new shirts. So that's the big to do for the night. I'm surprised at how much my nose has healed from all the chapping over just using Neosporin last night before I went to bed, and then I put some on today before I left for work. So it's healing back really nice. Uh, the sickness thing is uh, going away pretty quick feeling a lot better um, there were a few times I had to blow my nose today there were a few coughs but nothing major um, so I'm getting over it should be gone by the weekend completely hopefully I'm hoping I don't have too much congestion tonight with sleeping the congestion really messes up sleeping it sucks Last night wasn't too bad. I was able to sleep throughout most of the night last night with what congestion I have left. And I still have, you know, some congestion now, but, like, it's it's minimal. Minimal. Uh, was there anything else? Oh, the personal stuff, I can go ahead and say now, because, uh... What the personal stuff is, is that last week, Russ made the comment that he was uh, um, kind of looking for another job. 
Russ is the new instructor that just got licensed today. And um, I think he had a job with another company. And he, he said that last year... I don't want to throw too much of Russ's personal stuff out there, but he's been pretty open with it. Like, he's told tons of people the information I'm about to tell you, so it, it's not, like, private information that he just, like, told me or anything. He's he's very open about this. Um, he said last year he made something like ninety one or $93,000 with whatever trucking company that he currently works for, to my knowledge. Um, he works part-time for him or like on some kind of like uh, I think last year he worked full-time for them and now he works kind of like a, an on-call type thing and uh, I think he said he made 91 or 93,000 last year and it was on a 1099 and I was like on a 1099 I hope, and I said, I hope you saved up for taxes because you're gonna owe like something like twenty, 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 somewhere between like probably fifteen and twenty-five thousand in taxes on that. And he said, Yeah, I did, but then um, I forgot what he said. Like he uh, he stopped working and he's basically lived off that money, and now he doesn't have any. So I don't think he has the money to pay his taxes. Um on what he made last year. So I think he's going to have to go back. Uh, I don't think he makes enough it as an instructor. Uh, so he's going to have to go back to actually driving a truck to make enough money to pay his taxes on how much he made last year. So, uh, he, uh, he's been, he's told, he's hinted a couple of times in the last week or so week or two that he wasn't going to be around at this school much longer and that he was uh he already had a couple of offers that he was looking into at other companies to go back driving truck i don't know if it's over the road i think it's actually i do think it's over the road i think he said it was from georgia to uh southern california would be his route i think it's some kind of like dedicated route i think it's reefer he's going to be hauling reefer georgia to southern california and uh i don't know what company it is or anything like that but um cindy told us today that russ was going to be leaving soon and that he had told gary and pretty much all of the instructors and the staff and everybody knew that russ was planning on quitting and uh, so now I can divulge that information because I thought it was a secret. Apparently, it wasn't a big secret. It's just not something that uh, Russ wanted to go around advertising to all the students. But uh, so I don't know. But Russ got fully licensed today, so maybe he'll change his mind and be like, you know what? I want to see if I can make this work. I know Russ has been frustrated about not being fully licensed because like he can't really do anything he's just coming in and going through the motions all day even out on backing maneuvers they typically have another instructor there helping him like instructing him uh, it's so I don't know I think he was getting a little offended that he was a trainee and he was constantly being um, like questioned by the students and by the other instructors that were there training him and it was I think he was offended by all of that getting on his nerves type stuff but uh, uh I think that's about it I can't think of anything else I need to I need to work on the pre-trip stuff really need to do that. I doubt I'm going to get it done tonight, but uh, I need to get on that right now. And I don't want to do it, so I keep talking. Alright, I'm going to get off here before I rattle on for another hour. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. All that good stuff.